Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Limbo, a Hong Kong thriller from 2021 that was directed by Soi Chang and stars Gordon Lam. Rookie police officer Will Yan, played by Mason Lee, is a recent graduate of the police academy. Due to a wave of serial killings, Will is partnered with veteran officer Cham Lao, played by Gordon Lam who was recently reinstated on the force. During their investigations, Chan re-encounters a drug-addicted uh, street urchin, Wong To, played by Sia Lu, who accidentally crashed into his wife with her car not too long ago. And she offers to help with the serial killer case, but his anger towards the girl makes him spiral out of control emotionally. So the movie begins with a girl who seems to escape a kidnapping. And then we cut to Gordon Lam, who's investigating dismembered body parts that are being found around the city. Now, as you might expect, there's some pretty serious conflict between our main character and the teenage girl because of that accident with his wife. And that's sufficiently communicated early on. But thankfully, the script spends a lot of time on the younger girl. And it's handled very well, actually. And that's a, that's a testament to the writing in this, because they very easily could have turned her into a completely irredeemable character. You know, I mean, she made a huge mistake, and uh, it essentially destroyed the lead character's life. But as a viewer, you still kind of feel bad for her. So the emotional conflict really kind of flows from that. And uh, it establishes those dramatic foundations that are like the core of the movie. So they do a good job with that, actually. Now, Soi Chang's directing career has been all over the freaking place. All over the place. Early on, listen to this career. Early on, he did, I think, an underrated horror flick called Horror Hotline, Big Head Monster. Uh, I have a re mini review of that in my Asian horror playlist. I think that's from 2001. Uh, then he went on to direct, to direct New Blood, which was kind of mediocre. Then he did Death Curse with the twins, which was kind of like cheesy nonsense. Then he did Love Battlefield, which I thought was a pretty good flick. And then Hidden Heroes, which was more cheesy nonsense. Then he did Home Sweet Home, which could be his worst film. Like, it's basically crap from what I remember. Then he got nasty with Dog Bite Dog, which was like legit. I, I like that movie. It's pretty intense. I have a review of that one as well on my channel. And then he continued being kind of edgy with Shamo, which was pretty good, but a bit maybe a bit too abrasive and uh, uh, unbalanced. Then he switched gears and went high-end and classy with multiple projects with Johnny Toe's Milky Way Image. He did Accident and Motorway. And those are two films that I would recommend... Uh, people check out first if you want to crack into this director just because they're just good quality entertaining flicks and uh, very little on the abrasiveness uh, side just very crowd-pleasing movies I think after that he did Kill Zone 2 which I think is kind of underappreciated personally not as good as the first one but it's it's good enough <laughs> then he got cheesy again like you think he's he's on a pretty good streak now he's abandoned the cheese no he came back with the Monkey King movies. <laughs> and to his credit, though, Monkey King 2 is the best of that newer trilogy. It's certainly better than the, the one with Donnie Yen that came before it, right? So talk about a completely insane and inconsistent and unpredictable, like, uh, filmography. You know, directing career. You don't know what you're going to get. Uh, but some of these movies are, are good, and some of them, not so much, right? Well, Limbo feels like an older school grimy flick from this director it, it feels more like a dog bite dog than anything this guy's directed outside of that and uh very dark like depressing film like creepy uh the visuals are dirty there's dead body parts and garbage bags lots of garbage riddled alleyways too like uh real uh Real downtrodden, like, inner city areas uh, that are showcased here. You get some nasty corpse shots. You know, the killer keeps a collection of mannequins in his lair. I think they were mannequins. And uh, kind of like the Japanese film Blind Beast, which I'm wondering if that was an inspiration or not. And the film gets violent as well. Uh, there is, full disclosure here, there is one pretty 
disturbing assault on a woman. So just uh, I just want to give you a warning on that one. But if you like gr- like grimy, intense thrillers, this is going to be right up your alley. Right up your alley. And there's good quality thrills in this as well, actually. Like very nicely constructed suspense. There's a foot chase scene early on. Uh, one of the highlights is a chase suspense sequence that takes place in and around an apartment complex. And it's really good because the characters, our protagonists, get split up. And they each have a separate threat that they have to deal with at the same time in different parts of this apartment uh, complex. I thought it was like a really good scene. I really enjoyed that one. There's another scene near the end where this killer is like stalking a woman like in a rainstorm. And she's trying to hide in like these crevasses in like these dirty like uh, alleyways and stuff. I thought that that was a good scene as well. So this has got some, this has got some like highlight moments and like the investigation stuff is just kind of basic there's nothing great in terms of the investigation and uh but it really hits its highs during the uh the thrills and some of the character work Uh, i like the actors in this i mean gordon lom has been around for a while first time i noticed him was in infernal affairs i think it was probably the first one i noticed him in uh always nice to see him in like those johnny toe productions over the years and it almost seems like he's getting more acclaim lately which is pretty interesting, but uh, it's nice to see because I, I like him. Japanese actor Hiroyuki Ikuchi, uh, Ikeuchi, shows up as the villain in this, and I was like, I didn't even like expect it. Like he's one of those actors, though. He's very aggressive at gaining roles internationally. Like if you're if you're familiar with the Korean actress Kopi Kim. You know, she does, like, Japanese movies, or uh, the Taiwanese actor Wilson Chen, he does Korean and Japanese movies, so it's kind of interesting that some actors, like a small patch of actors, are almost very proactive at acting in different countries in the region. I just find that to be kind of interesting. Uh, But yeah, Ikuchi, first time I remember him was in the Kiyoshi Kurosawa film Charisma, Uh, but most people know him as the bad guy from Ip Man. But uh, Limbo is one of his more intense roles. Like, he's a nasty dude, and like a real bad dude in this. Probably his most evil character ever. But uh, he delivers pretty well in it. It's not given a lot of depth, but, it, you know, they give him a little flavor. So, and last, certainly not least, the film was shot in black and white, and it looks great. Like, it's, it's a really nice black and white uh, color scheme they got. And some of the shots, like... Uh, there's some shots at nighttime with, like, the cityscapes, and they look freaking awesome. Like, there's some really good shots in this. Really, like, beautiful shots. So, uh, yeah, that's another reason to watch this. But I, I strongly recommend this one. If you're into, like, gritty thrillers that could get kind of nasty and intense, you should definitely check this out. Uh, currently available on a Region A Blu-ray from Hong Kong. That's how I got it. I've been kind of wanting to watch this movie for a while, and it never showed up on a legit streaming site. So I waited, and a, it, a Region A Blu-ray came out recently in the past few months from Hong Kong, so that's the best way to get it, because that has subtitles. So check it out. This is a good one. And as always, folks, I'll see you next time.